Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this Neural Networks and Deep Learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about transfer learning and fine tuning of a neural network. So we can use transfer learning for a lot of different kind of stuff that we're going to talk about in this video here as well, and how we can fine tune an already like pre-trained or pre-built neural network. But first of all, I've linked the Discord server down in the description, so make sure to check that out and join the channel uh, if you want to join the community where we're talking about a lot of different kind of stuff about neural networks and deep learning. And we're also talking about computer vision and a lot of other different kind of projects. So if you have some projects and you have some questions, go ask them in there, or if you just want some inspiration for your own projects. So also hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here and like this video here if you enjoy it. So I'll jump into the first slide here where we're going to first of all talk about what is transfer learning and how can we use transfer learning in neural networks. So transfer learning is when we have a pre-trained model um, where we wanted to, to use it for a new and similar problem. So we have a pre-trained model and it can be trained on a really large uh, data set. So we have a pre-trained uh, model where, where we already have the weights that is trained on, on a really large data set and it could be like uh, a number of uh, like even like thousands of different kind of classes that we have pre-trained our, our model on. And we already have some, some pre-trained -trained model that we usually take as a standpoint and then we do transfer learning with those and also do some fine tuning uh, on those as well. So transfer learning is usually done when the data set is too small to train like a full scale model from scratch. So when we're not able to like create our own neural network from scratch and then train it on the data that we have because our data set is just too small uh, that we're not able to like train a full scale model, then we can actually like use transfer learning where we already have like a pre-built a pre-built or pre-trained model um, that we can use for the new and similar problem with a smaller data set. So let's say that we have a neural network that is like that, that we want to like uh, have, have trying to predict like for example trucks um, trucks that we pass to the neural networks, and then we find a neural network that is already pre-trained to like maybe like do predictions on normal like cars, and then we can actually like do transfer learning to add this new class here with the truck, um, so we can both predict that if it is a truck or if it's a car. And then we can actually like use transfer learning where we go in and use a pre-trained model to, to do the actual predictions on cars. And then we can extract some of the features that that, that pre-trained model has learned about like some of the features in cars. So like in the first couple of layers here, it could be like the symbol, uh, symbol like features and structures and, and stuff like that, like lines and circles and a lot of different kinds of structures and objects. And then in some of the later layers, like it's maybe head, headlights or like door handles and stuff like that, that it learns uh, to extract from the images. And then at the end, we, th then at the end, like we have some other different kind of features um, in trucks where we can add some layers for our uh, for our own neural network and when we're doing transfer learning. So when we're doing transfer learning, we actually like want to freeze the layers that we have already trained uh, our model on or like the pre-trained model on. So we freeze those layers so they won't be trained uh, during training and then we will add some additional layers or like another class here in the output layer here for example if we want to do some classification problem for for trucks as well and then we actually like um train our model again with the smaller data set that we have uh, with the class that we want to do predictions and like be able to do predictions on uh, with our pre-trained model as well and then at the end we can actually like do some fine tuning which we're going to cover uh, shortly here in this video so transfer learning can be used for a lot of different kind of uh, things and is really useful if you have a pre-trained model or if you just like have your own model that you're, you're trained from scratch and you want to add another class uh, in your classification problem that you're doing then you can actually just use transfer learning free some of the layers you can actually also, also delete some of the layers in the pre-trained model um, and then retrain it again on the new data that it hasn't seen before so you're able to predict new classes um, without having to like full re, uh, retrain your neural network from scratch again so you can use some of the weights and some of the features uh, that the neural network has already learned to extract um, from the images. So we can also do some fine tuning of neural network where we have trained on our neural network that we can actually like fine tune it to make it better and to make it like to make it able to like generalize better. So we can retrain the whole model uh, new model with new with a new data set. So we're like we train the whole new model um, with a data set. So this is like what we're doing in fine tuning. So first of all, we're doing transfer learning where we're freezing some of the layers and we can may actually like maybe add some layers or like uh, remove some of the layers from the pre-trained model. And then we can retrain the whole new model with the data set um, in fine tuning here where we actually like going to unfreeze all the layers. So all of the parameters here um, will be trainable. And with that, we're, when we're doing that, we need to like actually like um, have a really low learning rate because we can incrementally like adapt the pre-trained features uh, to the new data when we're unfreezing all of like the layers and the weights in our neural network. 
So if we're not having like a really small uh, learning rate, then we can actually like um, then we can actually like uh, destroy some of the features that we have already learned in our pre-trained model, and it will like destroy just destroy the idea of having this pre-trained model where we just like adapt it to a new feature or like a couple of new features to do some extraction of a new class, for example. So we can incrementally adapt the pre-trained features to the new data set by retraining the whole new model uh, with the data set or like the smaller data set that we have. And then have, we have a, a low learning rate. So it won't like affect the weights that much and we won't destroy the features that we have already learned in a neural network. So this fine tuning here can be a good example of like when we have a pre-trained model, we have done transfer learning to do new classification problems or like to, 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 like, to like do a new um, classification problem or like a similar problem where we just wanted some of the features from the already pre-trained model and then to optimize it a bit more and like make it, it, it able to like predict better on the new data set and like the smaller data set that we have compared to like the larger data set that it already predicted on. Then we can retrain the whole model um, with the new data set and, and, and then our neural network will be more stable and it will be able to generalize all the classes more uh, compared to just like the original classes, the, the whole data, like the whole model, pre-trained model was trained on and then the smaller data set uh, that we did with our transfer learning. So we can actually do this fine tuning here and transfer learning in Keras. So in Keras, we already have some built-in uh, pre-trained models in neural, ne like neural networks here in Keras where we have some different kind of uh, different kind of neural networks that has different kind of applications and we're going to talk about uh, some of them and we're also actually going to see in code how we can do this uh, transfer learning and fine tuning in Keras where we're going to free some layers we're going to like uh, take that model uh, do a classification problem on a new data set and then we're going to retrain it and do some fine tuning and we can see that we just have these functions here where we can actually just import import uh, all of these built in pre-trained neural networks over here and we can then initialize it uh, with the ways that we want so we want to initialize uh, this vgg's uh, 19 uh, neural network here that is pre-trained and we want to uh, in, in, like we want to initialize it with the weights where this model was trained on the imminent image net data set and then we can also specify some other different kind of parameters here like how many classes we want to train on and then we can actually like use the neural network here, freeze the layers, we can remove some of the layers or like we can add additional layers for our application and then we can um, pass in our new data set that we want to train it on with the frozen layers and then we do the transfer learning and then after that we have done the transfer learning we can actually like do fine tuning where we unfreeze all the layers and train the whole neural network with a low learning rate on the new data set where, where we want to like add a new class uh, to our neural network. So we're now jumping into Google Colab here and I'm going to show you like how we can import an already pre-trained model and then how we can do transfer learning in Keras here um, with the Keras like API and the pre-trained model that we have. And then we have a new data set that we're going to, to train our already pre-trained model on with transfer learning and then we're going to do some fine tuning um, at the end as well. So first of all here, we're going to import these different kind of modules here that we want. So we want some different kind of um, modules from the layers and optimizers and Keras and the TensorFlow uh, backend um, module here and also NumPy. And then second here, we're going to specify that we want to use the GPU for training our neural network. So I'll just run these blocks of, of uh, code here. So we have all, all uh, already like set everything up with GPU and the modules that we need. And then we can go down here and we need to like, imp imp uh, like uh, import the data set that we're going to use. So we're going to use a cat versus dogs data set. So we're just loading in a data set that contains a lot of different kind of uh, dogs and cats. And then here we're going to split it into a training set and a validation set and um, and a test set so we can see here that the number of training samples is uh, 9305 and we also have a number of uh, validation samples and also a number of test samples uh, that we're going to test our trained neural network on when we have done the transfer learning and fine tuning of the already pre-trained neural network so then first of all here we're going to import matplotlib here so we can actually like plot um, the different kind of like um, images here that we have in our data set so just like so I can show you like what is going on in the data set and what type of data that we have do we have that we're training our neural network on so for import this and run this uh, for loop here we can see that we have these images here in our in our um, in our training set so we can see that we have these images here and then we have the labels up over here uh, where a one is a dog and a zero here is a cat so we can see that uh, all of our images here is labeled um, correctly and this is our training set that we're going to train our our neural network on with transfer learning so if we're going down here first of all we need to resize our images so we, all of the images here uh, have this, the same dimensions 
um, both for like our, our test set, our validation set, and our, our training set, of course. <clears throat> so we're going to rescale it here to 100, 150 by 150, so we have a squared images uh, with this resolution here. So we're going to do it both for the, for the training data set, the validation data set, <clears throat> and the test data set. And we're going to, just going to, to do it with this uh, map and, the, and this lambda function here where we're going to use this uh, tf image that resize here, which will just resize all the images here uh, to this dimension that we specified up here in the size. And then we're going to specify the batch size where we want to like we want to um, store our, our images like from our data set in batches. So I've already mentioned batches in the previous tutorials or if you don't know what batches is and, and how we can specify the batch size and what it is and what it's used for. Uh, make sure to check that video out as well before uh, you're continuing uh, with this review here. So we're just going to use uh, this batch size here. So we're going to like uh, make it into batches uh, in our training set, our validation set and our test set. And then we're also going to, to call this a uh, cache, uh, cache function here and a prefetch uh, function here as well. So we're going to like uh, make it easier to like load it into memory um, when we're going to actually like train the neural network. So we're, we're storing it in the cache and we're also doing some prefetching of our data that we have in our training set. And so if you just run these two uh, modules here as well, so we're following along. Then we're going to go down here and actually like import uh, the layers here from Keras. So first of all here we're going to create this like sequential model here where we're going to do some data augmentation of the data that we already want. So first of all here the first uh, like pre method that we're going to use for data augmentation is that we're going to randomly flip our images in the horizontal uh, direction. And then we're also going to apply this uh, random rotation uh, in our data augmentation. So we're going to random rotate our image with 0 0.1. So we will get some data augmentation. So we'll get more samples into our data set and we'll also get some different kind of samples uh, where our images are fl randomly flipped and also randomly rotated uh, by some degree here that we specify here. So I'll run this block of code here as well. And then down here we have this, uh, we're going to import like the NumPy here where we're actually like going to uh, split in our, our training set into images and labels and then we're actually like going to to like show it with the augmented images here with this for loop here that we're going to run through our, our, our training set. So we're only going to actually like do data augmentation on our training set. We want to keep our validation set and our and, and our test set uh, as it is so we can like validate and test our model later on on like data that it should see uh, when we're like, like doing predictions with our neural network. So when we run this block code here It'll just go through this here and then we can see like the data augmentation from from uh, for one image in our data set here. So we can see that the image here is rotated like randomly around some axis with some degree. And we can also see that this image here um, is also also flipped around um, the horizontal like axis here. So we can see that it's just flipped horizontally. Um, so this is like how we can do data augmentation and get more samples from our like actual data. So we can see that we have these di nine different kind of scenarios here uh, with its corresponding labels. And then we can actually like go down here and, and actually like import uh, the pre-trained model. So we're going to use this base model here where we're just calling this, like as I showed you in the slides, we can call this carriers.applications. And then we have some different kind of uh, pre-built uh, modules with pre-trained like uh, parameters and weights. So we, we're going to use this exception pre-trained model here and the weights that we're going to initialize it with uh, is, is the weights from the image net. So this neural network here has been trained on the image net um, data set and then these loads, uh, these weights here will be loaded in um, in this model here. And our input shape is 150 by 150 because we have this uh, rescale image that we did on the whole data set. And then we have the last parameter here, which is the three channels because we're, we're operating with colored images um, in this example here. And include top here, we just set that to false. So we're not going to include uh, the last layer in the neural network because we want to do this transplant here where we're going to specify a new class that we want to do predictions on and to do to be able to like classify with our pre-trained uh, neural network when we're doing the transfer learning and later on fine tuning. So first of all, here we're going to freeze the base model here. So when we're training the neural network here or like doing transfer learning, uh, we won't be training the, the already uh, layers. So we, are, we already have some uh, features that we can extract from the layers or uh, like from the neural network, which can be like uh, basic shapes and also some other different kind of features. Like for example, when we're going to train on, on cats and dogs, maybe it has already been trained on some images where we can see some like eyes and ears and tails and stuff like that. So we set this, uh, we freeze the base model here by calling this uh, trainable here and set it equal to, uh, to false. 
and then we can create a new model on top of that already pre-trained model uh, where we're going to specify the actual like layers that we want to have uh, to be able to like to, to create our own neural network for the application that we want to do so first of all here we need to specify the inputs that we want and again we just want 150 by 150 and then the three dimensions for the colored image and then we're going to see to, to like actually apply like random uh, data augmentation here so we're going to apply this data augmentation on the inputs here that we specified up here when we're creating our new model on top of the already built uh, and trained and pre-trained uh, model that we specified up here with the exception that is initialized with the uh, with the weights from the ImageNet uh, dataset. So down here we can see that we're, we're the pre-trained exception weights um, required that uh, requires that the that, that the input uh, is normalized from zero to two hundred fifty-five to a range of minus one to uh, to positive one, which we've already been over um, in one of the previous tutorials where we talked about uh, standardization and normalization. And then the normalization layer uh, does the following: so it, it takes like the output, which is equal to the inputs uh, divided by the mean, and uh, like subtracted by the mean, and then we divide it by the square root of the variance, which is uh, which is the standard deviation. And we went over these different kind of formulas in the last video as well, where we talked about some batch normalization and stuff like that. So we're going to have this normalized layer here where we just call this normalization functions of the, of the, like the layers here that we have in our pre-processing uh, modules. And then down here we can calculate the mean and also the variance uh, for it, like this uh, layer that we're going to normalize. And then we can call this norm, uh, norm layer here of the X value where we just have this normalized layer here. And then we set uh, the, the weights for our normalized layers with the mean and the variance here that we calculated up here with this uh, with this formulas up here. So now we have our, our layer uh, normalized in the neural network here that we're creating on top of the already pre-trained model. And then the base model here, it contains the batch normal, normalized uh, layers. So we want to keep them in, in inference mode. Um, when, un when we unfreeze the base model for fine tuning, so we make sure that the base model is running um, in inference mode here. So we want it to run in inference mode so we're not like training our already like um, pre-trained weights and models. So we set this base model here, X, and then we set the training here uh, equal to false, which means that we're now um, in inference mode. And then we just set the, the layers here to like a global average pooling uh, to two dimensions. And we set it to this X, X value here, which is the normalized layer that we have. And then we also apply some dropout here. So we drop out like 20% uh, of like the neurons or like um, the weights and the trainable parameters in our neural network uh, for this layer here that we're specifying on top of our pre-trained model. And then we set the output here equal to a dense layer here where we just want to have uh, a binary in uh, output. So we either have a zero or a one in case of uh, we're predicting if it's a cat or a dog. And then we set the model here equal uh, to this carriage model here, which where we're going to specify the inputs. And then we're also going to specify the outputs here. So the inputs up here is the input that we're creating on top of the model. And then the outputs is, is like the dent layer here, which is a binary output. Um, so we just specified in, in this model here. And then when we run this blog code here, we will just do a summary of the model that we have now created on top of already pre-trained uh, pre, pre um, neural network. So first of all here, we can see that we have this first uh, input layer here and we have 150 by 150 and by three. And then we're going to create this sequential layer here and then we're going to normalize the layer and then we have the exception model here which is the pre-trained model on the ImageNet data set and we can see that we have um, a lot of different kind of like shapes here so it's 5 by 5 and 248 and we can see the number of parameters or like the number of parameters that we have in that neural network that is already uh, like pre-trained over here to the right so we have like over over like um 20 million, 20 million parameters in this neural network here. And we can see down here um, that we have the total parameters here and we only have 2000 trainable parameters, which comes from the layers that we added on top of the already pre-trained model because we have set um, we have set the layers in the exception model here um, to like non-trainable. So we've rose the layers here in the exception model. So they won't be trained when we're like doing this transfer learning on the new data set that we have. And then we can also see like uh, we don't have like that many uh, parameters that our neural network can learn from, but we know from the exception model here that we already have some uh, features that we can that we can extract and use for the new classification problem that we did. So this is the perfect uh, like the purpose of um, transfer learning when we have uh, a neural network that is already pre-trained and we want to like have um, have it have it do predictions on a new application which is like kind of like similar um, to that previous one, so we can use some of the features from the already pre-trained one. 
So we can see that we have this global average pooling layer here that we added as well. And then we also added this dropout layer here. And then at the end, we, we created this dense layer here, which just has a binary uh, output. So we can see that if, if, the predict, uh, if the neural network is predicting a cat or dog uh, to the image that we pass in after the training. So then we can go down here and compile the model where we specify the optimizer. So in this case, we're specifying it to the atom optimizer. And we can also uh, specify this uh, last function here where we're going to use the binary cross entry v because we're having this binary output. And the metrics here where we're going to, we just want to see the binary accuracy here when we're going to train our model. And in this case here, we're just going to run it for three epochs. And then we call this function here fit, which, which will actually like do the training of the neural network. So in this fit function here, we need to specify uh, the training data set that we want to train our neural network on. And then we need to specify the epochs and then we're going to specify uh, the validation data set that we're going to validate our data, uh, like our neural network on while it's training. So if we run this block code here, it will actually like do um, the, the training of the neural network. And then we'll go over like epoch by epoch and we already specified the batch size uh, that we pass to a parameter for each epoch here in the neural network. And then we can see here while we're training like for the first epoch here we can see like how, how much time is it estimated uh, left here for this epoch and then we can also see like how the loss changes uh, while running through this epoch here and the different kind of batches in our neural network and we'll also get this binary accuracy here uh, which we specified up here as we want at the, uh, the binary accuracy as the metric and we will also get the validation loss here and the binary uh, accuracy for our validation set so we can validate if our model is underfitting or overfitting to the data that we pass it to. And when we're already operating with a pre-trained model like these, um, uh, like these metrics here will already be pretty good uh, when we have like a model that is trained on, on a lot of different kind of data on the image net. And then we just want to like do predictions on cats and dogs, which is has already trained some features on in that neural network. So the metrics here will be very accurate uh, already from the beginning. Uh, when we're training it and we can see that now we've been through like all the three epochs here in the training process and a loss has gone here from uh, point uh, 23 here to point 11 so we can see that we have actually like uh, made our neural network better by by training it over three epochs here and we can continue training it over more epochs until we converge uh, towards like a steady uh, loss and also like a steady uh, binary accuracy here and we can also see like the, uh, the binary accuracy also uh, increased on um, on like the training data that we're doing and the same case is over here to the right where we have the validation uh, data where we can see like a loss gets a, a bit a bit smaller and also like the binary accuracy um, is pretty steady here in this example here like around uh, 0 0.97 uh, and we can optimize this by adding my like for example more layers um uh, to make it more accurate or we can do more training and like for more epochs but in this example here we can see that we get a pretty good result here and we get like an accuracy of 0 0.95 uh, and we get a validation accuracy of 0 0.97 and these are very similar so we're not really overfitting uh, the data when our uh, validation binary accuracy is actually like better than our training binary accuracy so when we're done this here we can actually like unfreeze the base model when we're doing the, the fine tuning of the neural network and we just note here that it keeps running in inference mode uh, simply past like training equals false when we're calling it and this means that the batch normalization layers will not update the batch statistics uh, and this will pre prevent uh, the batch normalization layers from undoing all the training we've done so far so this is very um, important that we specify so now we set the base model here to trainable so we can actually like do the fine tuning so all the weights are now trainable in our uh, in our neural network and we just specify a low learning rate so we will just like be better to generalize and and like actually like do predictions on the new data that we have done uh, with our transfer learning so first of all here we're going to set it equal to trainable um, the base model here trainable equal to true and then we do a summary of the model here so we can see like uh, the number of trainable parameters that we have now and then we're going to compile the model again with a lower learning rate in this case here uh, we have a really low uh, low learning rate um, and we still use the binary cross entropy loss function here and also the accuracy uh, the binary accuracy which is the metric that we're going to evaluate our uh, training process on and then we're just going to train for two epochs in this example here like you can train it for more epochs if you want to and if it makes the results better and then we just use this fit function here again where we just have the same training data that we're going to fit uh, to our model here but in this case here and in this and this block code here we won't just train it on the new layers that we have added, but we will train it on the whole neural network, including uh, the already pre-trained model, uh, the exception model trained on the ImageNet dataset. 
So when I'm going to run this block of code here, we can see that we get this um, a summary of the model here and the training process here down here is, is started. So we can see that now we have, like before we only had 2000 trainable parameters, which was from the top layers that we built on top of the already pre-trained neural network. And then we froze the layers inside of that pre-trained model. But now we have unfrozen the, um, the, 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 like, like the base model or like the pre-trained neural network. And we can see that now we have like close to uh, 21 million trainable parameters that we're now going to train our neural network on uh, with the training set uh, that we have like trained our uh, like neural network on previously when we did the transfer learning and but in this case here we just have a really low learning rate uh, to make a neural network like to be able to to generalize more and be able to have more accurate predictions in, in general on the new data that it hasn't trained on in like uh, in the general or like in the pre-trained model so we can see that here it takes a bit longer for the model to train now because we have a lot more parameters that it needs uh, it needs to pass through and make the calculations for and then we again we get the metrics here for the loss and the binary accuracy so the neural network is now done training and we can see that we run it for, uh, for the two epochs here and it took like around three to four minutes so make sure you have the the gpu hardware accelerate on because if you're running this on the cpu it would just take like a lot longer time by only just running these two epochs here because we have 21 million trainable parameters and we're operating with images. But we can see that just for these two epochs here, we can see that our loss here for our, our training uh, has decreased and also the accuracy here, like the binary accuracy here has increased for these two epochs here. And also the validation loss is the same and like the validation binary accuracy which uh, decreased and the uh, validation binary accuracy as actually like also uh, increased by a bit so if you're training this more for like a couple more epochs like you might get better results uh, but this is just to like show you like how we can train the neural network here and do the fine tuning so now we're training all like our data set we're now we're training the data set on the whole neural network with all of the different kind of parameters with a really low learning rate uh, so we so we're able to like do more stable predictions on the new data set that we're going to like transfer our already pre-trained model to. So when we've done this here, we can go down here and actually like do new predictions. So we can actually like just call this predictions and then set it equal to model.predict and then the test data set here uh, that we specified. And now we have actually like done the predictions of the test set here that we have. And then we can just like see the different kind of like predictions that we have here and the results. Uh, so if you pass a new uh, cat or dog image to our neural network here now we will actually like get a prediction of what it predicted like if if this is a cat or a dog so the last block here is just to evaluate the model that we have already trained now so we're going to we're going to pass the data set here uh, to this evaluate function here and then we're just going to print the result so now it, what it's doing is that it's passing all the images in our test data set to the neural network here that we have trained and then it will like calculate the loss and the binary accuracy for all the test images that we're now passing through the new neural network. And we can see here that we get a loss of 0 0.06 and a binary accuracy of 0 0.97. So it's a, a really good uh, accuracy on new data that it hasn't seen before and also a really low loss here. So we're actually like been able to do this transfer learning here where we have a pre-trained model on the ImageNet data set and then we did this transfer learning uh, so we have another application where we want to do some uh, classification of if of cats and dogs as well, and then we used um, and then we used transfer learning to actually like um, transfer our pre-trained neural network to that other application that we want, which is also similar, and we can use some of the other different kind of features that we already have trained the neural network on in the pre-trained one with the image uh, net data set. So after we've done that, we actually like did the transfer learning. We, we actually like fine tuned our neural network where we unfro uh, unfroze all the layers in the pre-trained neural network. And then we trained the whole neural network with the data set with our cats and dog and did the fine tuning with a really low learning rate. And then at the end here, we did predictions where we get, uh, where we get a really good uh, binary accuracy of predicting cats and dogs and with a really low loss in our neural network. So thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future because it just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way and I just really appreciate the support. If you're interested in one of the other tutorials I'm doing, uh, I'm currently doing a computer vision tutorial in C++ with OpenCV. And later on, we're going to combine that with uh, neural networks here and convolution neural networks. And we're going to like combine those two and see like how computer vision and deep learning works together. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye for now.